Oh, boogie right. man Ben coming round the band is boogie man Ben is boogie man Ben. Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today's video is part 20 of my Reworking the Lot series. I want to thank my friend uh, Ray Fundora for making me aware of this information regarding another test screening uh, observation of the Salem's Lot remake that we are still kind of... Un, it's still kind of unknown when this movie or if this movie will drop. The article that Ray pointed me to is from a site called Cinemaholic. I have never really checked the site out. If I have, it's been sort of, it's not one that I regularly check. But the article is called Stephen King's Salem's Lot Adaption is Scary But Stretched. Test Screening Reaction Reveals. And it's written by Samith Prasad. I don't know if I said that person's name right, but just going to go over uh, what is stated in this article. There is something that's a little bit weird. So I don't know if this person just got the information wrong or the person that was actually at the test screening got some of the character, got one of the characters mixed up with a different one. So I'm just going to read it and give my observation at the end of the article, similar to what I've done with the last few videos in the series where I've talked about, you know, um, you know, columnists writing about either the you know the movie just being MIA or what could have possibly caused it to be MIA so anyway here we go so this is Gary Dollarman's eponymous adaption of Stephen King's acclaimed novel Salem's Light is scary but stretched revealed a test screening reaction the film follows Ben Mears a writer who returns to his hometown of Jerusalem's lot seeking inspiration for his next novel Mears eventually realizes that the lives of the residents of the small town are threatened by a vampire hiding in a big mansion in the region the horror thriller progresses through Mir's efforts to fight and defeat the life-sucking entity. The test screening viewer described the opening monologue of the film, a flashback scene that depicts Mir's childhood in the town as crazy intense. According to the viewer, there are ample amount of jump scares in the film, but they are stretched very far into the length. The vampires in the film are described as animals and not James Wan ghosts. Wan, the co-creator of Saw and Insidious franchises, and creator of The Conjuring Universe serves as a producer on the film. Dahlerman's version of the saga of Ben Mears and Kurt Barlow is described by the viewer as more of a remake of the 1979 television adaption of King's novel than a faithful adaption of the source text. The reaction reveals that the vampire scenes in the film do resemble the, pa the same sort of scenes in the series. In addition, uh, the famed antagonist Barlow, Pilo Asbeek, does look similar to James Mason's portrayal of the character in the show. I was blown away by what I saw. Barlow looks like the original, just a little older and no blue skin. It was so creepy the viewer shared. Another positive of the film, according to the viewer, is the climax, which is described as clever. The person described Mackenzie Lee's portrayal of female protagonist Susan Norton as really convincing. The viewer, however, wasn't satisfied with the characters and plot progression. What problems I might have with the movie is that the movie doesn't take the time for the characters and the plot. Everything feels rushed. The movie goes around 112 minutes, but because the spooky scenes are stretched, it feels like I was sitting and watching a two and a half hour movie. The viewer shared, you notice that all the characters in the book are actually included in the movie, but they only have very short scenes and all seem like short cameos. We get to know the town, but not every single inhabitant, so I had the feeling that there are just caricatures the viewer further added. Salem's Lot is Darwin's second feature film as the director. Following his directorial debut, Annabelle Comes Home, his critics are as a screenwriter include Annabelle, It, The Nun, It Chapter 2, etc. The cast of the film includes Lewis Pullman as Ben Mears, Alfre Woodard, Bill Camp as Matt Burke, John Benjamin Hickey as Father Callahan, etc. In addition to one... Michael Clear, Roy Lee, and Mark Wolper produced the film. Warner Brothers is yet to announce a release date of the film. So what do I think? Uh, well, the whole thing is that Pilo Asbeek is not playing Barlow. So that was the first thing that stuck out to me. And, and Ray pointed that out too, that it was a little confusing. And by all accounts, Alexander Ward is the one playing Barlow. So again, I think there was just a mix up either from the screener or just the way that the columnist interpreted what the screener was saying. It could be a multitude of things. We know for a fact that Pilo is playing um, Straker. He's not playing Barlow. Um, it does, I, I do think it's interesting that the viewer, uh, the person that actually attended the screening does look at this as more of a remake of the 79 miniseries as opposed to an adaption of the book, um, which is what I think a lot of people have been speculating. I, and maybe that's what has changed and why there has been so many delays because initially they were going for more of the book, then they realized what the cult following 
of the original miniseries was, and they've tried to sort of hone it or sort of shape it to be more of a representation of that while telling, you know, maybe some of the key scenes in different ways. Again, this is all speculation. Again, we still don't have a release date. So it's been sitting in limbo for a year. Um, so it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully we start to get some more information about this. I really think if Warner Brothers was smart, um, they would get this, you know, sort of scheduled to come out. I think I think it's unfair to fans that we have been kind of left in the dark by the studio. Um, there's just been no information outside of these little articles here and there. So anyway, we'll have to wait and see, but wanted to make sure I brought this to, uh, to everyone's attention. Uh, it does make me happy to hear that it is in the vein of the original miniseries that the vampires are monsters. They're not, you know, they're not supposed to be romanticized. I really am curious to see what they can do with it. And for all the people bad-mouthing uh, Gary Doberman and James Wan, um, it really upsets me because we have no idea what's going on. And uh, both of those um, artists are very capable artists. Um, I think Dauberman has delivered some terrific horror films. I love both of the It movies that he wrote. Um, I think he did a great job on Annabelle Comes Home. And I think James Wan is just a master storyteller and has done some fantastic films with The Conjuring, The Saw films, Dead Silence, which is my favorite film that he's done. I think this property was in capable hands. And uh, I think it all comes down to bad decision making on the studio's part. If the property was going to be done, which I wish it would have never been touched, but if it was going to be done, I had faith in the people that were actually going to be making it because of their past, um, their past contributions to the horror genre. So again, that's what I'm going to say. I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you so much again for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. Thank you so much, uh, Ray, for uh, my friend Ray Fendora for making me aware of this. I hope everyone's doing well, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy, stay scared as always, and remember, you can do nothing against the master. Fright Fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. Uh, I've been doing this for over 11 years and the horror genre is a passion of mine and it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy, stay scared as always.